there any evidence that you might have uh, of his somehow being corrupted because as we have, as I've said in my opening statements, that the laws of Vietnam uh, provide loopholes for corrupt officials uh, to, uh, to abuse villagers, to abuse uh, uh, believers, and to use the loopholes in the laws to uh, benefit themselves and to benefit their families. Um, do you have any knowledge, any evidence of uh, corruption on the part of Mr. Mr. Nguyen Ba Thanh? Yeah, looking about uh, his corruption, then, you know, in the end, some people call him, uh, his guy, that 10% uh, guy. That means every, um, you know, every um, investment deal. Investment deal, yeah. He got about 10% of, so, uh, you know, uh, from here, that's uh, what, um, you know, uh, from here, um, I, 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 I want to talk about whole, um, you know, uh, de develop about that, about $600 million uh, USA, right? They get, uh, he get about 10% in there. So if you can provide me uh, with, you said you have documents, if you can provide me with documents or uh, maybe testimony from anyone, uh, it would be very beneficial to us. Uh, I don't have right now, but I can send back, send to you later. Hopefully. Now, do you have, uh, my last question, uh, uh, Councilman Smith, if you don't have me, do you have any officials higher than Mr. Nguyen Ba Thanh be involved uh, in this project and how they are, they themselves are benefited uh, from this project? Um, about this question, I, I'm, 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 I'm not so sure about that, but, uh, you know, um, um, I got some uh, document from, uh, you know, a communist member in the Da Nang. They, uh, they write a letter and uh, <coughs> uh, ask you, um, we uh, must about corruption. Then I have all letter from them. Then uh, s some of them they 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 give uh, total evidence in there. For sure, I uh, I will give you total about that. Thank you very you, much. You can get that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Let me ask uh, first. Uh, you know, again. Uh, I and Joseph Cow mentioned a moment ago the United States, this is Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's statement, that the U.S. will continue to urge Vietnam to strengthen its commitment to human rights. I've been in Congress now 30 years, and both Mr. Wolf and I, who both got elected in 1980, have made human rights and humanitarian issues the centerpiece of what we do. And frankly, statements like that, with all due respect to the Secretary of State, clearly lack sincerity. Uh, it is not about a broadly stated concept uh, that people who are being tortured or being deported or being mistreated in some other way or have their, having their religious freedom uh, savagely uh, uh, taken away from them. Uh, it's about the deeds and the deeds of countries like the United States to speak real truth to power, not in glib sentences that sound good, make for a great sound bite, end up in the AP or the, RF or the AFP, uh, a article that is then written, it looks like we were robustly raising human rights. And when I juxtapose her statement, which seemed to lack any kind of specificity, uh, with the statement by Kurt Campbell, as reported uh, by AFP, uh, Ass Assistant Secretary for East Asian Affairs, Kurt Campbell said, as I look at all the friends in Southeast Asia, I think we have the greatest prospects in the future with Vietnam. Now, why anybody in Hanoi would be worried about the United States taking Vietnam to task on human rights when that kind of flowery flattery, uh, the idea that we are merged, joined at the hip 
uh, that we have common uh, ground, if you will, uh, in terms of our futures, when the Vietnamese human rights record is absolutely appalling in virtually every aspect uh, of it, especially in the area of religious freedom. Uh, I think it's telling that it didn't, it didn't happen until June and the ratification still hasn't happened. Uh, but the International Religious Freedom prescribes an, assist, a, 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 an ambassador at large to deal with religious freedom. Uh, we went well over a year into this administration without that person being picked. Uh, and that person still is not at her uh, at, at the helm of that religious freedom office. Uh, it's a revelation of priorities. And so I, with great disappointment, uh, I, I raised the fact that, and we had invited, this, this commission wanted to hear from the administration uh, and has been, unfortunately, again, been blocked uh, by sending no representative to appear at the witness table to not just give an accounting, but to give insight as to what it is this administration is doing with regards to religious freedom in Vietnam. Uh, we think very little, and uh, I think the record shows it. It should have been a no-brainer to reimpose country of particular status of concern, I should say, <coughs> CPC, on Vietnam, given its appalling uh, backtracking uh, since it got the bilateral agreement and uh, ascension into WTO. Uh, John Hanford, our former assistant, sec our former ambassador at large for religious freedom, felt that he had, quote, deliverables that the Vietnamese government was intent on providing, uh, including no more forced renunciations of faith, uh, that there were a new era was beginning in Vietnam. Uh, he, I think, was extremely well-meaning, but very naive, because as, as soon as they got, they, the Vietnamese government, uh, the economic benefits, there was a snapback uh, to the old and even enhanced persecution of political and religious uh, uh, adherents. We look at the Block 8406. That great human rights manifesto has become a list of people that the Vietnamese government now hunts down, harasses, incarcerates, and <coughs> tortures. Uh, so if anything, we should have learned the lesson uh, that, w that this is a country that is going in the wrong direction. So I. Any of you who might want to comment on the administration, particularly uh, Mr. Kumar or Mr. Vandermee, uh, I'm very troubled by Kurt Campbell's statement uh, that looks like solidarity together. We're best of friends. Well, best friends don't let friends commit human rights abuses. And Vietnam is now a nation that has gotten demonstrably worse. And this whole episode of a Catholic diocese just south of Da Nang uh, being mistreated in such a death to at least three people, an unborn child and two individuals, and perhaps many, many more. You noted, uh, Mr. Nguyen, uh, in talking about your, your brother, uh, uh, about the, the stripping of women and the use of a shotgun. You know, wearing a uniform, police or military, ought to be a sign of respect. Uh, instead, this is about perversion as well as heinous torture. So I, I, you know, so they're wearing the uniform, this anti-riot group, who, who, whoever it is that is perpetrating these crimes against humanity, uh, they're wearing their uniform with shame. And I hope the Vietnamese government takes note of that because at least some of us, and I hope a clear majority of us in Congress, both sides of the aisle, Democrat and Republican, recognize that. Uh, let me ask a couple of questions. You might want to respond to Kurt Campbell's statement and the Secretary. My wife found an old video that was on C-SPAN uh, just the other day, uh, C-SPAN's archive, and she pulled it up and showed it to me, and I hadn't seen it, never saw it, because I actually gave it. It was a press conference over uh, at the house in the third floor where there's a, a press gallery. It was on May 26, 1994. Late in the day, on a Friday, when every member of Congress, except for me, I was a little late getting back to my district that day, had already left, the Clinton administration delinked human rights from most favored nation status. They did it so that there would be no reaction. It was a shameless act that was taken by that administration. And I went back and I watched it. It was about six minutes long, and everything, frankly, that I said, Mr. Wolf was saying the exact same thing, as with David Bonnier, uh, who was then the, the, um, uh, the whip for the Democrat Party, 
all of the people who cared about human rights in China, this isn't Vietnam, but it's China, were saying that by delinking trade with human rights, uh, we would see more of the worst. There would be a deterioration. Everything we said at that press conference and others have said uh, has happened uh, with regards to China. The same is now happening uh, with Vietnam. They got the economic benefit. It is right back to the same old bad old ways of torturing people, torturing them to death, and obviously cracking down on religion. I would ask you too, uh, maybe Mr. Vandermeer, you might want to speak to this, but you know, at the United Nations, everybody is all nice to each other, and I guess diplomacy is important. Uh, but at the Universal Periodic Review uh, of Vietnam, which was done uh, well over a year ago, uh, Vietnam, the recommendations including enhanced cooperation with UN special procedures and to re-engage with a special rapporteur on freedom of religion. The last time that happened was back in 1998. Our resolution that Mr. Wolf, Mr. Ein, Joseph Cow, and I have introduced calls for a special rapporteur on religious freedom. We ask that Manfred Noack, the special rapporteur in torture, on torture, be invited into Vietnam to, to investigate, to provide a report about what is going on. Uh, and, and I'm wondering what your feelings are. It is the operative language of our, of our resolution calling on the UN, calling on the President of the United States and Secretary Clinton uh, to, to call on Vietnam uh, to, to appoint those, uh, or the UN, to appoint those two special rapporteurs, and then another one that would look generally at the situation. What would be your feelings on that? 